Nuclear energy is the safest energy source available anywhere on the planet. Despite being safe, major accidents have occurred at nuclear power plants, and the consequences have rocked the world far more than anticipated. On March 28, 1979, at 4 a.m., about 10 miles downstream from the state capital in Harrisburg, something historical was going to hit the United States of America. The Three Mile Island Nuclear Power Plant, built on a sandbar on Pennsylvania's Susquehanna River in 1974, was praised for producing affordable and reliable energy during an energy crisis. However, no no one realized that the nuclear power plant in Pennsylvania was going to experience the most severe accident in the country's commercial nuclear power plant operating history. In this video, we reveal what happened that fateful morning and the top 5 facts about the incident that you may not know. Sit still and watch this video to the end to get included in a long-aged secret. Let's dive in. In nuclear power plants, neutrons collide with uranium atoms, splitting them. This split causes neutrons from the uranium to collide with other particles, resulting in a chain reaction. This chain reaction is managed by control rods, which absorb neutrons. Nuclear fission heats the core water, which is pumped into tubes in inside a heat exchanger. To generate steam, those tubes heat a separate water source. The steam then powers an electric generator, which produces electricity. The core water is returned to the reactor for reheating, and the process is repeated. In the Three Mile Island case, radiation-tainted cooling water poured from the open valve into neighboring structures. The core began to drastically overheat. On the morning of March 28, 1979, emergency cooling pumps activated automatically when cooling water began to drain from the broken pressure valve. These safety devices, if left alone, would have prevented the emergence of a more significant crisis. However, operators in the control room misread the contradictory and confusing readings and turned off the emergency water system. They also turned off the reactor, but residual heat from the fission process continued. By the next day's early morning, the core had reached over 4,000 degrees, just 1,000 degrees short of meltdown. In the meltdown scenario, as the core melts, deadly radiation spreads across the countryside, potentially killing many people. The contaminated water released radioactive gases throughout the plant as the plant operators struggled to understand what had happened. The radiation levels were dangerous, even if they were not immediately life-threatening and the core cooked further as the contaminated water was contained and precautions were taken to protect the operators. The accident was reported to the outside world a few hours later. Metropolitan Edison The plant's parent company downplayed the crisis and claimed that no radiation had been detected off plant grounds. But on the same day, inspectors discovered slightly elevated levels of radiation nearby as an outcome of the contaminated water leak. Governor Dick Thornburg of Pennsylvania considered ordering an evacuation. Eventually, 12 hours later after the report, the plant operators realized they needed to restart the pumps to get water flowing through the core again. The temperature began to fall and the pressure in the reactor began to decrease. The reactor was less than an hour away from total meltdown. More than half of the core had been destroyed, but the protective shell had not been breached, and no radiation was escaping. The crisis appeared to be over. The next day, however, a bubble of highly flammable hydrogen gas was discovered within the reactor building. The gas bubble was formed two days earlier, when exposed core materials reacted with superheated steam. Some of this gas had exploded on the day the incident began, releasing a small amount of radiation into the atmosphere. The explosion, which sounded like a ventilation door closing, had gone under noticed by plant operators at the time. Residents were advised to stay indoors after the radiation leak was discovered on March 30. Here are the top 5 facts about the accident that you do not know. There were no injuries, deaths, or direct health effects. Following the accident, the U.S. Department of Energy, the NRC, Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the Environmental Protection Agency, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and the Department of Health and Human Services conducted detailed studies of the accident's radiological consequences. Experts believe that a scary number of 2 million people in the surrounding surrounding area were exposed to trace amounts of radiation during the accident. The average radiation dose was estimated to be about 1 millirem above the area's natural background of 100 to 125 millirem per year. To put this into perspective, the exposure from a chest X-ray is approximately 6 millirem. The exposure from the accident had no discernible health effects on the plant workers or the surrounding public. Equipment and instrumentation malfunctions occurred in Unit 2. On March 28, 1979, equipment failures and a stuck open relief valve prevented the removal of heat from the core of the Three Mile Island Unit 2 reactor, an essential function that prevents reactor damage. When proper pressure levels were reached, the instrumentation 
information incorrectly indicated to plant operators that the valve had reclosed as expected. Unaware that the plant was experiencing a coolant loss accident, operators took actions that exacerbated the problem. Because of the malfunction and operator error, there was insufficient cooling water circulation to the reactor core, causing it to overheat and partially melt. As a result, a trace amount of radioactive material was released. There are no negative effects on the environment. Concerns were raised months after the incident about possible adverse effects of radiation exposure on plants, people, and animals in the Three Mile Island area. Thousands of environmental samples of milk, water, air, soil, vegetation, and foodstuffs were collected by various government agencies monitoring the area. It was determined that very low levels were caused by the accident and that the radioactive release had no effect on the physical health of the individuals or the environment. NRC implemented enhanced safety and training measures. A thorough examination of the accident's events resulted in widespread changes throughout the commercial nuclear industry in the United States. The NRC implemented new, more stringent regulations related to improved training, emergency response planning, as well as upgrades to plant design and equipment requirements. Operators are now fully trained to understand the system's physics. This knowledge better equips them to use their operating knowledge and plant procedures to work through and manage unexpected accident scenarios. The nuclear industry established the Institute of Nuclear Power Operations in 1979 to provide a unified industry approach to plant management, training, and operation in order to improve nuclear safety. The NRC expanded its international activities to share important technical upgrades with other countries. DOE is currently working with international partners to better understand nuclear incidents around the world, such as the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster. The analysis and lessons learned from these events support the continued use of nuclear energy in a safe, secure, and peaceful manner. Unit 1 at Three Mile Island was operational until 2019. Three Mile Island had two nuclear reactors, Unit 1, which started up in 1974, and Unit 2, which started up four years later. Unit 2 was shut down after a partial meltdown in 1979, just a year after its startup. The fuel was removed and shipped to Idaho National Laboratory, along with the damaged reactor core debris. In 1993, the unit was placed in long-term, monitored storage to await decommissioning alongside Unit 1. Unit 1 at Three Mile Island remained operational for 480 months before shutting down in the fall of 2019. The reactor had a capacity of close to 900 megawatts of carbon-free electricity and employed over 600 people at its peak. There you have it guys, Three Mile Island America's worst nuclear accident. What do you think? Is the accident as serious as claimed? Do you feel the accident was a result of just machines or human error? Let us know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section. If this video is insightful, please go on and like this video. Remember to subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell for more updates.